Welcome, I'm Lisa Curtis, and this is part four of The Messy Middle. I've been sharing with you my journey as I work through a change, or I should say as I work through a decision about a change, and I wanted to bring that to you in real time, which this is pretty real-ish time, um, so that you can really get a handle on what it looks like to make a decision and to be moving through the change process. We talk about the change process a lot, but one of my big beefs is that we don't actually, um, we don't show by example. We don't often let people into the middle. And I wanted to let you into the middle of the decision-making process as I did it, rather than just sort of drop a bomb on everybody. I promise I'm not even gonna drop a bomb. This announcement's not all that big. But it does give you a really good sense as to what the messy middle is. So as I said, this is part four, because guess what? I've made a decision. I am making real steps in a new direction. Not a totally new direction, but I'll explain that in a minute. So let me back up really fast. The change process starts with not having any awareness that there might be a problem to moving more and more forward to hearing a bell ringing sort of in the back of your head that says, mm, I think a change might be necessary. What we know is that we spend this portion, the contemplation stage of the change, cha stages of change, gathering information and deciding what might or might not work for us. I am a huge fan in deciding what won't work as much as I am a fan of deciding what might be a decent fit. So that gives us a real sense as to what can be weeded out and what do we sort of need to whittle it down to. So after much thought, and here are some of the pieces that were going into my decision making, I knew I wanted to make somewhat of a pivot, but not a massive pivot. I know that I love the work that I do dearly, so I want to continue to do my work just in maybe a slightly different way. I know <laughs> for sure that I am not going back and getting another graduate degree or anything like that. Not going to happen. I also know, and this played a critical role in my thinking, that one of the best experiences I've ever had in my entire professional career was when I ran a dinner group. I think I spoke about that in part three. That dinner group was nothing but magic. And the more I thought about it and the more I began to tease out what made it so good and so wonderful, the more I realized that part of what that magic was was not only the really good food, because I hate to say it, and I don't mean to brag, but I'm a really good cook and I'm a very good baker. And my guys, by the way, they all did the cooking too. They are really good cooks. I landed on a group of people that can really cook. So that, that wasn't it. I mean, I could, but it's not it. The thing that was really critical was the amount of time we spent together. We spent anywhere from two to two and a half hours together at one clip. For any group, even if you ran a group in a clinic, that's a tremendous amount of time to spend all concentrated together. Usually when people run groups, they run them for about 90 minutes. There may or may not be a break in there. If it's a three hour intensive, um, in, intensive outpatient program, that will be three hours, but they usually have at least one, if not two breaks in there. So it was the time that I realized made a tremendous difference. And that's gotten me moving on a, a path of thinking about working more intensively with my clients. Maybe not working with them every single week for 50 minutes at a clip. Maybe that's going to mean working with some clients for three hours, don't worry, there'll be breaks, um, in one shot. And maybe they don't come back for six weeks. Maybe they don't come back for two months. Maybe they don't come back to me at all. But maybe those clients go on with a foundation that we've put together to work individually with, a, with another therapist. The way that I'm thinking about, I'm not in, so I'm not entirely sure about all the details, so, but what you're seeing is, yeah, basically the, the route I'm going to start to take, which is that I want to, to really be able to offer some different approaches for my clients without getting stuck in the rut of 45 to 50 minutes. So this might work really well for, as a matter of fact, I know it works really well for couples who are in the middle of a crisis, 
for couples who are navigating the early stages or a crisis in recovery status, if one of them needs to get into recovery or if one of them is in recovery. This works really well for people who are having a hard time redefining their purpose or their path moving forward. This is a well-tested model for people who are, again, are looking to sort of tackle a really tough topic, get some foundational pieces in place, and then move on with those. This is also really useful for people who have very complicated schedules or for people who are first responders or first frontline workers, say that fast, and who don't have a lot of flexibility in their schedule. So when they get some downtime, they wanna tackle as much as they can. Again, have as much under their belt, go out, see how it's working, maybe come back to me or go to another therapist to do more work. But really think about it like you might think about cleaning. Do you know, do you, are you one of those people that likes to clean for 10 or 15 minutes a day? That's great. Or are you one of those people who wants to do one big, like huge cleaning, get that knocked out of the park, and then you don't have to do anything big for another two, three, four weeks, depending on how tidy you are during the week. So again, it's really beginning to think about how can I offer services that are more individually tailored to the people who are sitting with me, who are looking to make those changes. So I've made that decision. I've started to implement it by beginning to write the copy for the website page. I've even gone so far as to contact my website developer who will do the final finishing touches and make it look good. And I even hired the person who does some of my copy work for me to go over and polish up what I've already written. So it's begun, the change has begun. I'm not sure how or when it's going to, to go out into the light of day. Well, I kind of do know because I'm telling you guys. And that's the beginning again of, of beginning to really now take my plan and put it into action. That doesn't mean that somebody's going to show up at my door tomorrow asking for a time period to work intensively. But it does mean that I've started to, to feel comfortable enough to say it out loud. So that when colleagues call, when new clients call, it's part of the repertoire of what I can offer. So there you have it. The messy middle, all the way from the beginning to the place where you begin to make real changes. That's what it looks like. It's messy. It's not easy. It may not be done. At some point, I'm gonna start this and I may have to revise the plan a little bit. And that's okay too. That's part of how this all goes. If you have questions about your own messy middle, or you have a question about working intensively, or what it means to make a change and how to sustain that change, feel free to reach out. I'll put the comment in the comment section, I'll put the contact information for me. In the meantime, I'm Lisa Curtis, a licensed clinical social worker and substance abuse counselor. And I wish you the very best for your day. I hope this has been helpful to you.